So whether you want your eggs back right now, or you just want to get over them, if you're like most people, you miss them regardless. Maybe you miss the connection you shared, maybe you miss having someone by your side, maybe you miss the comfort, the relationship brought you, the daily routine that you perhaps really liked. Maybe you specifically miss the future that you've kind of planned with your ex. So things like maybe kids, maybe you already had plans about moving in together. Maybe you had plans like marriage or you're simply lonely and that's why you miss them at the moment. Now, regardless of why you miss your ex exactly, the solutions to missing them less or to stop missing them altogether are thankfully identical. And in this episode of the Max Jenker Show, I'll go over a couple of solutions with you. Now, bear in mind that all the solutions that I will talk about, I want you to treat them as experiments. Some may work for you, others may not work for you, and they may actually fail spectacularly, and that's fine. There is no one solution for everyone. There is no magic formula that can help you miss your ex less, regardless of who you are, your background, your relationship history, and so on. So please, approach all these solutions with the mentality of, they may fail, and if they do, that's fine. You just try out a new solution, and that's pretty much it, and you go from there, and you optimize from there. Now, starting with our first solution, to missing your ex less, a very simple one, just cut them off, or at least distance yourself from them, don't message them anymore, don't call them anymore, stop stalking their social media, maybe even unfollow and block them altogether, don't block them if you want to get them back eventually, because you want them to reach out, to be able to reach out, if you're on that side of defense. However, if your goal is to simply recover from the breakup, by all means, yes, block them. It would actually do you a lot of good. Now, additionally, when it comes to mutual friends, distance yourself from them or completely cut them out of your life at least for a few months so you can process everything and kind of get over or get past the breakup. Also, avoid going to places that could elicit painful memories that could remind you of your ex. And when it comes to belongings, please do yourself a favor, do your ex a favor, return their belongings, and make sure that they return all of your belongings as well. What this will do is it will cut out the need for any sort of a bridge in the future that you can then leverage to maybe reach out to your ex Uh, if you just simply at some point miss them so much that you just can't help yourself but reach out. You basically want to approach this solution with the mentality of removing as many options for you and your ex to contact each other as possible. Now, what if you have kids? What if you have pets with your ex? What if you work together or live together or just share some shared responsibilities? In that case, all you have to do is instead of cutting them out completely from your life, Feel free to stay in touch, but only talk about and communicate about your shared responsibilities, the things that keep you together, that require you to be in touch, to stay in touch. That can be your first solution, by the way. Now, as for the second one, it's all about managing stress. Now, according to a really popular Harvard study on managing stress, Well, there are three ways, three really good ways that you can manage it that I want to share with you in this episode. First one, relaxation modalities, meditation, journaling, yoga, qigong, therapy, gratitude practices. These are all really good examples. The second way is cognitive behavioral therapy. So this is a very specific kind of therapy. Usually it gets the best results for tackling any sort of depression or anxiety-related problems, but you can also use it in this case because it is known to really help people deal with their stress more effectively by helping them change their mindset and their perception around the stress for the better. 
So basically, to put it in more practical terms, it helps people see themselves as someone who can overcome their stress, making them more likely to actually overcome it. As for our third way of dealing with stress, it's all about goal setting and habits, be that in your career, in your friendships, with your hobbies, whatever you feel is important to you. It's really important to have a certain amount of goals that you're trying to hit. Now, keep in mind, it's not the point to eventually hit them, although that's great. The point is just that you move towards the direction of your goals and let them kind of lead you away mentally from your ex. Let your goals and the habits that you're building that will help you reach those goals, let that be kind of like something that propels you away from constantly obsessing and ruminating about your uh, your dead relationship or something that pulls you away from simply missing your ex all the time. Now, as for solution number three, this is a very basic one. You probably already heard about it, and it's all about socializing. It's all about gathering a support system, so a group of friends, family, peers that are really there, ready and willing to listen to you, to give advice, to help you out. It's really all about leaning on such a support system so you can feel better about yourself. Now, if you don't have such a support system in place, go and build one. Reach out to friends, to family members, make new friends, perhaps, and just socialize more than you're probably used to. Even if you're an introvert, even if this maybe kind of makes you feel a little bit a little bit embarrassed, a little bit awkward, a little bit afraid, uncomfortable. Try to push yourself really into the arms of other people, especially if you actually mean something to those people. And when I say lean on your support system, I mean go to them, ask for advice, ask for feedback, ask for opinions, even vent a little bit. Don't whine, don't be a downer, no one likes those kind of people, but feel free to vent a little bit, maybe even Tell the people in your support system, hey, I need about 10 minutes to just vent about my breakup. Can you, like, help me through it? Can you just listen to me? And then proceed to doing it. Anyway, solution number four, it kind of relates to this last one. And it's all about dating yourself for a while and dating others when ready. The thing is, looking for a partner immediately post-breakup, while it definitely does help you miss your ex less, it has a couple of other drawbacks. It can really lead a person to just suppress their breakup pain instead of processing it fully. And that down the line, so in the long term, makes them often a little bit miserable, a little bit sad, uh, a little bit, especially with men, angry. And then those pent-up emotions can lead to emotional outbursts, to temper tantrums, all of which damage your current relationships or dates or whatnot. So, my advice here would be, take some time and date yourself. Don't just go and hop into the whole dating game post-breakup. I would even suggest waiting months if you have to. As a rule of thumb that I generally recommend, Wait until dating feels fun and exciting, until you're actually curious about it, until you're actually jazzed about it a bit. Don't do it. Don't f- the last thing you want is to force yourself to date just so you can feel something again or just so you can get that high of being loved and appreciated and, and whatnot, which can open up an entirely new discussion about external versus internal validation, as well as worthiness and self-esteem but that's a topic for another episode. Right now, let's go to solution number five, throw in yourself into self-care, hobbies, and responsibilities. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, generally, the more you double down on these three things, the less you will miss your eggs because the more you'll be able to focus on yourself. You'll be, basically, to put it in another way, too preoccupied with yourself to really obsess about your ex. And that is not when it happens all the time, but generally for a short period until you like recover 
from a breakup to get to a, like a baseline state when it comes to your happiness and well-being, this is a good idea. Now, when it comes to self-care, a few things to, well, keep in mind. Straighten out your hygiene, improve your sleep, exercise regularly, and don't let yourself go. Very important. Like a breakup, it's no excuse for you to stop whatever you're doing, to stop any forward personal growth movement, to become a slob, essentially. Now, when it comes to hobbies, maybe make a bucket list of them. Maybe make a list of even activities that you think you might enjoy, that you think might become your hobbies eventually. Then pick a few of them and go do them. And try it out, see how it feels. And at the same time, double down on your already existing hobbies and have fun with those. And when it comes to responsibilities, well, I'm mainly referring here to things like child rearing, studies or school, um, work, career, double down on those things. And another additional note, if you still live with your parents, but you're of the ripe age and you have the means for it, you have your financial life sorted out, I would really recommend go and grab your own place. Uh, this is a very underrated tip that I noticed in my life. It really makes you feel confident. If you have your finances in order, that is, it makes you very self-reliant once you kind of uh, disconnect from your parents a little bit and go living on your own. So just keep that in mind. Kind of food for thought. Now, solution number six would be to rebuild your routine and structure. Basically, a big reason you miss your ex is because you, when you lost them, you also lost a bunch of these shared activities and routines and habits that you've cultivated with them. Maybe you prepped meals together. Maybe you watched a certain show together. Maybe you walked your dog in the park together. Stuff like that. And r right now, you basically don't have any of those habits any longer, which is fine. There's a gaping hole inside you philosophically, therefore, the best thing to do is to fill it with new routines and new habits that, in this case, because you just don't really have a choice, consist of you basically being with yourself. So brainstorm a little bit. How can you create some new solo habits in your life? Be that going to the gym, cooking, uh, playing video games, doing some sort of an activity that enriches you, that inspires you, that you enjoy doing. Think about it. Play around with it a little bit. Test out the different habits and routines from day to day and see if you can find some that really resonate with you and that you can actually stick in the long term uh, with. Basically, find something that's sustainable because if an activity, a habit, a routine, whatever, ain't sustainable, in my opinion, it's usually just not worth even doing. Solution number seven for missing your ex less don't resort to blame. Blaming for your, your ex for the breakup, sure, it feels good. It feels amazing, actually, in the short term. In the long term, you're shooting yourself in the foot because it makes you a very angry, resentful, and bitter person, which then also leads to more rumination about your breakup and your dead relationship, which leads you to just miss your ex more. So what should you do instead? Take responsibility for the breakup. Even if it's not your fault, it is your responsibility how you approach it, how you deal with it, how you perceive it. So even if your ex cheated on you, lied to you, they were a bitch, an asshole, and it's, you really haven't done anything wrong, at least nothing major, as opposed to your ex, which in this case, let's pretend that they have done something majorly wrong. Even if that is the case, how you pick yourself up now, how you get yourself to a happy, stable place, it's on you. So focus on that. Don't focus on the blaming stuff. Don't focus on, it's their fault, I'm, I feel like this. It's their fault, I'm not doing as great as I should be doing. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Take responsibility and see how you can improve yourself. Bas basically, look for solutions instead of just pointing fingers. That's the whole gist of this message, this solution to miss an annex less. As for our next solution, it's gonna be the popular 3M formula from Nick Wignall. Move, make, meet. Basically, 
do these three things whenever you really miss your ex and you are pretty much guaranteed that you will at least not miss them less, but maybe at least get your mind off them, which will help you miss them less in the long term. So what I mean by move, make, meet. Move, it's really simple. Hit the gym, go for a walk, lift weights, dance, do yoga, just do something that involves movement. Make, cook, create artwork, do something with your hands, maybe even fix something in your house. Do something that involves some sort of a physical movement aspect. It doesn't need to be anything that feels like exercise. It can be really mundane stuff. The point is you want to move your body. And finally, there's meet. Meet up with someone you're close with and hang out. However, note that this is a bit different from the support system approach that I shared earlier. Here, the intention is just to meet a person and have fun nothing else. When we talked about support systems there, our intention was seek advice, vent, gather feedback, stuff like that. As for our ninth solution to miss an annex less, it's all about scheduling the time to just let it all out. Scheduling the time to miss your ex and let all your emotions out. Now, how do you do it? Very simple four-step process, okay? Number one, go somewhere you won't be bothered. Number two, set a timer for like 10-15 minutes, then let yourself miss your ex as much as you want. If you're angry, punch a wall. If you're sad, cry. If you're um, feel if you feel agitated, masturbate. And once the timer rings, stop. Do something else. Apply maybe even our uh, one of the last tips that I shared to get your mind off of this solution and see how that feels. After you do this solution, a couple of times, what you will notice is that your longing for your ex will deflate a bit, but you will have to do the solution multiple times in a row. This is not something like a quick fix. This is something you need to stay consistent with. So just keep that in mind. Now, the 10th solution is kind of a funny one. Well, yeah, it's to humor yourself. It's to actually, whenever you miss your ex, close your eyes and just bring whatever ex-related thoughts are in your mind to the forefront and gamify them and make them into something funny. Maybe sing them in your mind in the tune of happy birthday, maybe scribble them down on a sticky note, play around with that, maybe draw your thoughts, maybe think about them in a cartoon-like setting, like you're watching them on TV in a cartoon-like setting, in a very dramatized, very funny cartoon-like setting. Now, I know this isn't a solution for everyone. Sometimes you just really don't feel like humoring yourself. But just, as I said at the beginning of this video, consider this solution just another experiment. For some people, making fun of their own thoughts might work out really well. For some people, it will not work out. So just keep that in mind and approach the solution with an open mind. At least give it a shot once and see how it feels. As for solution 11, it's a little bit more philosophical, yet very simple to understand. Care about something other than just your ex. The theory goes that if you only derive happiness and meaning from your ex, you make them the main or the only source of your happiness, you're gonna be miserable. Because once that main source of your happiness in general, if you only have one, once that source is taken away, from you or it fails, you will fall into an existential crisis. Whereas if you have many things you care about, many things that give you meaning and happiness, so in addition to your ex, even if your ex stays an ex for good, even if you lose that one thing, you still have a bunch of these other sources of happiness and meaning that you can fall back on. Now for the solution, brainstorm a bit. What are your other sources of meaning? What do you care about really much besides your ex? Is it your career? Is it being part of a certain movement? Is it fighting for a cause you believe in? Is it getting better at a certain skill? Is it sticking to a certain habit? Is it, I, I don't know, it taking care of another relationship even? Is it investing in your friendships? Figure these things out. And then once you did, maybe double down on them. Maybe focus on them more than usual. And hopefully that is going to put your mind off your ex 
for a bit. Now, usually this is the most powerful solution when it comes to missing an X less. However, note that it definitely is not relevant for most people because a lot of people, they don't know what else they value besides their X, what else brings them so much happiness and meaning, at least to a degree where that one source can actually be a good replacement for their other source, which is in this case their uh, X related source. So just keep that in mind. As for solution number 12, it's all about support groups and it's all about counseling. So when it comes to therapists, when it comes to counselors, they can provide this safe environment that you can open up in. They can give qualified advice, proven solutions. They know their shit. They're qualified to deal with people like you. So it's a really, really great investment of your time and money. On the flip side, support groups, also great stuff. Because in there, you can find people that are going through the same shit as you. Maybe a breakup, maybe that's actually just general grief from a deceased person. Who knows? The point is, they're going through very similar types of emotional problems than you are. So that makes you feel way less alone in this world. It makes you feel way less lonely. And that's something you really need when you're going for a breakup in general, especially when you miss your ex like crazy. As a side note to this point, yes, breakup coaching, it can also help, especially if you're dealing with surface level issues like how do I get my ex back? Is no contact rule working? How do I implement, implement it? How do I not repeat the same mistakes in my next relationship as I did in my previous one? If those things are your concern, yeah, breakup coaching can be a valid solution. Just don't mistake it for therapy because the two things are very, very different. They go hand in hand, but fundamentally they are very different. And obviously, shameless plug, if you want breakup coaching, magsjenker.com slash coaching. Buy my shit, yada, 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 give me your money. Let's move on. 13. Realistically reassess your relationship. So, instead of focusing solely on the positive aspects of your dead relationship, strive to create this more of a balanced outlook, how things actually were, and that can actually lead to you missing your ex less because you can convince yourself and you can kind of find the truth of the matter that maybe, just maybe, your relationship wasn't ideal. Maybe your ex wasn't, in fact, very compatible with you, very suitable for you in the long term. Now, this is a conclusion most people that I talk to come towards, uh, come to, because it kind of makes sense. I mean, a breakup inherently is a sign of incompatibility. But the problem is a lot of people bullshit themselves that they had this perfect relationship and that it should work out and it would work out if only they would get another chance. Well, the reality is far different. The more you can actually cultivate a realistic understanding of what went wrong in your relationship and whether it was actually suitable for you, the more balanced, rational, and resilient you're going to be when it comes to dealing with feelings of missing your ex. Solution 14. By the way, we are almost at the end. It's all about not forcing yourself to stop missing your ex. Now, as counterintuitive as it sounds, you don't want to force yourself to stop, completely stop missing your ex. Because this philosophy can very quickly backfire. Usually, and this follows very much aligned, this is very much aligned with the backwards law from Ellen Watts, I urge you, read about the concept, it's not, an, it's not a hard thing to understand. Basically, the whole gist is that the more you try to pursue something, the less likely it is that you're actually going to hit it, that you're actually going to get it, that you're actually going to achieve it. For example, I saw this with my, with my whole blogging business, right? When I started this shit, I was writing a bunch of articles, I didn't have a YouTube channel back then, and I was a perfectionist about them. I wanted each article to be a massive hit. And that's a lot of pressure I put on myself. That's a lot of pressure that then actually paralyzed me. My desire for immense writing success is what actually made me a worse writer. I procrastinated, I intellectualized, I got really quickly confused about 
mindless details regarding my articles, like how to format the whole thing, how to structure different sentences, what kind of a picture, like cover picture do I want for my article, stuff like that, stuff that really slowed me down. And what do you know, it wasn't until I've let go of that perfectionism, it wasn't until I was able to let go of this desire for just making a banger article every fucking time that I finally became productive. My output finally grown bigger and I actually started producing more quality work because I wasn't pressuring myself the whole fucking time. The same can happen when you're trying to miss your ex less. If you maybe take a step back and not pressure yourself as much to simply like get your mind off them, I think it may very well be the case that you will actually miss them as paradoxical as counter and counterintuitive as it sounds, that you will miss them less as a result. Which also kind of brings me to a little side point here, a side note. When you're going through all the solutions listed in this video, don't try to do all of them at once. Pick one, play with it around for a few days. If it works, stick with it, great. If it doesn't work, quickly pick a new solution and play around with that one for a few days. The last thing you want to do basically is take all the solutions from this video and just apply them like day one or start applying them day one. That's going to lead to overwhelm. That's going to lead to, as it happened to me in my business, a lot of unnecessary pressure and you are going to be worse off because of it. Now, finally, solution 15. Know that there is always an end to missing your ex. This is also one of those very counterintuitive, annoying to hear points. Sometimes you just don't really have to do anything. Sometimes you're simply stuck in the grieving process somewhere in the middle of it, let's say, and whatever you do, yeah, sure, you can speed up the process sometimes, of course, and you can definitely slow it down. Stalking your ex on social media, for example, by doing that, or chasing and pursuing them, or showing up at their doorstep unannounced. But generally, what I mean is that sometimes simply waiting for time to do its thing is an actual possibility. Sometimes you don't really, what I'm saying here, don't have to do anything to miss your ex less. Sometimes you just need more time and you need to be fucking patient. And this is definitely something the young generation, my generation, needs to hear. Like, I know fucking social media kind of fried your brain. Um, fucking be patient. When it comes to breakup recovery, missing an ex less, even getting back together with them, be fucking patient. Time is key. Time is crucial here. Sometimes you can cut corners. Most of the time, you can't. So chances are you can just sit right here wherever you are, basically in the world, do nothing, and you will actually come to a point where you stop missing your ex altogether. So that's the message I want to leave you with. That's it for this episode of the Max Jenker Show. Subscribe, sign up to my newsletter, the breakthrough letter, maxjenker.com slash letters. And uh, yeah, buy my courses, buy my books, buy my coaching, give me money, take care. Still don't know how to end the podcast uh, the right way, but I'll get there eventually. 